it's time to get the BTS vlog started. Yep, the this is gonna be the uh, BTS vlog for uh, January fourth, fifth, and sixth, possibly the seventh as well. We will see how when this vlog actually ends. But to begin, I will give you the time and date stamp. All right, as per usual, vlogs because it is a log require the time and date stamp. It is 20 hours and 32 minutes into the day of Saturday, uh, January 4th, 2014. And I was supposed to be in bed by now, but I am instead doing this uh, uh, video. That's because, as of le just like last year, uh, a fire alarm went off and uh, I'm uh, kind of left holding the bag here. Uh, I have to do a fire watch. And that means I have to go around the building once an hour, every hour, uh, until uh, morning. And uh, check and see if there's any fire. <laughs> I'm the, uh, basically the fire watch person here. And they give me a list of the fire watch procedures. What I have to do, this is the order of the fire watch here. This was basically the, uh, uh, the, the incident report that uh, occurred uh, just about an hour ago. Uh, so, that's all done here. You know, see here, that, uh, 1821, 18 hours and 21 minutes into the day, cause, and it's now 20 hours, uh, 20, 20 hours and 33 minutes, so that's about, uh, just about two hours ago, uh, the, uh, fire alarm went off, I went, called it in. And the thing is, is that uh, my building, is, my unit is attached to a variety of other other units, and it turned out to be a burst pipe in the first unit uh, down on the end. But uh, the sprinkler system that controls everything is in the unit next door to me, so that's why I ended up hearing the uh, the fire alarm. The way I heard the fire alarm. So that, that kind of leaves us uh, with time to kill. Uh, so I'll see what I ended up doing in terms of, of vlogging. But uh, on to the uh, uh, subject at hand, or the topic at hand. I was uh, talking in the last vlog about this guy, uh, this author named Chris Hedges. And how you can't be dismissive of other people's particular points of view. Even if you disagree with them, even if you have evidence that they're wrong. Because it's not a matter that the person is wrong, it's a matter of why the person is wrong and understanding how they came to this particular conclusion they came to. Now, Chris Hedges is a liberal, admittedly, and supported, he supports liberal ideas. But, through his experiences in life, when you hear him talk, he's not a liberal. In other words, his life experiences have led him into a conflict with his uh, liberal understanding of the world in terms of, or particularly his liberal education in his particular chosen point, his points of view. And this has kind of left him with a little bit of a dilemma in terms of how he sees things and presents them. So he ends up uh, on some of the uh, nastier ends of uh, conversations with uh, people like uh, Sam Harris and uh, Christopher H Hitchens who are what I would call the standard debunkers. Uh, I would call the standard debunkers haters. They are, uh, let's put it this way, arrogant, rude, and completely dismissive. Their dismissive behavior is so general, so wide-sweeping that it's a wonder how these people came into their positions. <coughs> and a lot of it, I think, is simply uh, their this, uh, position of esteem has more to do with their own bluster, their own sense of self, uh, uh, rather than any, some, any significant uh, contributions. I'll give an example. As you know, now they always bring up Stephen Hawking as one of these famous atheists, a physicist who's an atheist. But Stephen Hawking will be the first to tell you, if he's as a researcher, 
that he doesn't understand everything that goes on in the universe. He'll also be the first to tell you about, uh, about dark matter and uh, dark energy. And how we only see, at most, 5% of the universe. So there is no way, particularly since uh, uh, Stephen Hawking also knows and understands the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, that he can state for an absolute fact that there's no God. In other words, all he can do is state, well, from my experience, from my probability, that there is no God. That's all he can do. He can't state for an absolute fact. Stating for an absolute fact that there is no God is a violation of physics. Plain and simple. Uh, so... That being said, and since physics is the, is the principle, uh, the, sort of the, the pinnacle of all science, all science rests within physics, then therefore you can't actually state that God doesn't exist. In other words, it means that the idea, the concept that God doesn't, ex is, uh, doesn't exist, is just that it's an idea and a concept, and uh, there's no facts, there are no facts behind it. Because you cannot state absolutely, you cannot demonstrate absolutely, due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, that there is no God. So this brings science, for those of, you, for those of uh, the atheists who build their faith in atheism on science, well, if science is, uh, is not absolute, and it is in many ways uh, a belief, then what ends up happening, as that system of belief becomes a system, that becomes religion, and science becomes a religion. And the thing is, this is actually something that uh, uh, Chris Hedges, who is not uh, anti-academic, uh, he's actually very pro-academic, he's very pro-liberal uh, uh, ideas, liberal ideology, ends up, ends up demonstrating how ignorant uh, academic thinking is the ag academic and institutional thinking. In many cases, is very rigid. It holds on to its truths very carefully, and almost nothing can break it. You, 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 in many cases, have to be very daring to go outside the the accepted academic thought and challenge academic thought. Yet, this is exactly what happens in science. Science proceeds with this challenge of standard academic thought. In many cases, science proceeds and succeeds on the failures of standard academic thought. So where does this leave, leave people who, are, who say, oh, science is not a religion? Well, if you stick to it in that manner, it is a religion. It becomes a religion because that's the way you view it as. Anyways, I will come back in the next segment and... We'll Well, I'd like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, Kalak uh, Kristuyana. It is the old Christmas, or Eastern Christmas. That's right, if you're an Eastern Christian who hasn't bowed to the West, uh, this is your Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Christmas, there are two Christmases. One is the Western Christmas, which is on December 25th. That's New Christmas. And Old Christmas is the Eastern Christmas. Uh, and that's celebrated on January 7th. And the reason for the change between uh, uh, January 7th and 25th has to do with the evolution of the Western Christian Church that forced everyone to change their calendar and uh, all but a few uh, Christian groups changed their calendars and uh, I'm part of one of the groups that didn't change their calendars was we wanted to keep things uh, in as much order as possible so that we can remain connected to the ancient church, to the ancient Christian church. Uh, this is prior to the uh, uh, the advent of the Western church. The Western church evolved later. It evolved after 800 AD. And it actually evolved away from the original uh, theology <coughs> set out by uh, the early Christians or the Eastern Christians. The Eastern Christians, uh, and the, uh, known as the Orthodox, uh, their theology is one of a personal Jesus where there is an interpersonal relationship and there's no need for the papacy. 
in terms of the papal authority. Matter of fact, papal authority in the Eastern Christian Church is viewed as a uh, it it matches the definition of antichrist. So from the Eastern perspective, if you look at the original Eastern theology, the Pope when it adopted its theology of the papacy as the supreme authority, uh, really defined itself as the Church of the Antichrist. And uh, unfortunately, though, mo there was a lot of pressure put on Eastern Christians, and most of the Eastern Christian churches have now succumbed to a papal authority. Yep, yeah, this phone call coming in, just a minute. brother so um, <laughs> he's on his way to pick me up we're going to my parents house for Christmas uh, we're gonna have Christmas uh, sort of uh, lunch there together open the presents and so on and so forth that's your standard Christmas uh, uh, and then we're gonna go over to a uh, uh, another family members house uh, basically when kids get baptized or when you get married you have uh, uh, something known as combati or combato uh, these people become family. Marriage, marriage is not a, a simple matter of uh, <coughs> one person marrying another. Families actually marry each other. And so there really is that sense of extended family. And so after you, you go around to each other's houses for Christmas. So uh, Christmas is multiple uh, visits to multiple different houses. And um, just an all around, all around general good time. Uh, if you've been watching uh, my Twitter feed, you'll notice that there have been changes for 2014. And the changes are is that I'm going to be trying to, on a more regular basis, uh, stretch out the amount of work that I do in terms of the different shows, different things that are going to pop up. <coughs> uh, so that we can sort of see how things, so you can sort of see how shows are progressing, uh, how shows are developing. Or not. Uh, in other words, there's going to be a lot of a lot more um, uh, attention to detail on show development in BTS Vlog and on the uh, Twitter feed than there was before. And you'll see that uh, I've been adding uh, shows to the Ubuntu BSD Unix Intel watch list. Watch list are the different videos that I'm going to be using for sources for the content that I'm uh, I'm working on. Uh, so it, there's a number of uh, different uh, um, uh, features that are going to be developed for 2014. Uh, new show developments are going to be coming into here. Uh, show developments for older shows are going to be coming on here as well. In other words, we're going to be spending more time on show development, uh, more time on uh, production issues than we've done before. So there's going to be more production uh, notes in here in addition to the... Uh, development of Instagram notes. Uh, sorry, Insta vlog notes. So, anyways, I'm going to leave this here for now. Uh, I'll give you my time, the time and date stamp because I forgot to do that at the beginning. It is 12 hours and 10 minutes into the day of Tuesday, January 7th, 2014. Maybe I'll vlog on the road. I don't know exactly how it's going to work out because uh, my family still has to get used to the fact that I'm a vlogger. <laughs> anyways, uh, take it easy. <laughs> Merry Christmas. About, uh, let's see, 21 hours and 41 minutes into the day of Tuesday, January 7th, 2014. It is the f end, or near the end, of the first day of Christmas for myself. So, uh, old Christmas, if you're on the Easter, uh, following the East Eastern tradition of Christmas. So, celebrates the 12 days of Christmas. So, this is the first day of Christmas. Tomorrow will be the second day of Christmas, and all the way up to January 19th, and because uh, we need to wrap up all the festivities that are going on, I'll do Vlogmas until January 20th. In other words, uh, you, if, if you really love Christmas, if you're a person who loves Christmas, then uh, this is your opportunity to, to extend Christmas, to keep Christmas going. Not in a fake way where oh, we're just simply adding on more Christmas, but in a real way, a real historical way, uh, following the tradition, traditions of Christmas throughout the world. 
Uh, the January 25th Christmas is the European Christmas. It's common throughout the European world and more of the modern world. The January 7th to uh, January 19th, the 12th days of Christmas, that is more of an ancient tradition that has been lost in the West. So, if you want to follow Christmas because you're a Christmas person, well, here it is. Um, the old, the new Christmas, which is the 25th, then you follow the old Christmas for 12 days, starting from January 7th to January 19th. And the last day for Vlogmas is... Uh, the wrap-up uh, will be uh, uh, January 20th. That gives you uh, just about two months worth of Christmas. Uh, for me, this is uh, uh, something that I do enjoy. I do enjoy uh, the sort of this Christmas period. And it kind of gets you thinking about this, or sort of talking about this with uh, uh, about a number of people over Christmas. Uh, because we have family uh, who... Uh, who are basically, uh, they're Irish, they're Irish, Scottish, Irish background, and, uh, they're of a Catholic background, an older Catholic background, and we have this discussion about, uh, what, how the Catholic Church has changed, and how, in many ways, the theology of the Church has kind of changed as well, as, the sort of the the, the 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 consequences of the theological quote unquote innovations and reforms introduced by the Roman Catholic Church in ten fifty four really resolve res, resulted in an entire um, line of history that in some cases is tragic but in other cases this is part of modern history. Uh, in other words, uh, if you go back into into, into um, uh, Roman Catholicism, the feudal system, the feudal system gave way to slavery, uh, and it actually, in many ways, brought back the slavery, uh, slavery under the Christian name. Uh, early Christ Christians, uh, from the time of Emperor Constantine on, were forbidden to have slaves. So your first emancipation of slavery of slaves occurred around 380 with with the uh, with the emergence of uh, Emperor Constantine as the first Christian Roman Empire Emperor under a real Roman Empire not the Germanic Empire and one of the edicts was and this was from the, the Christian Church's Christian background that uh, all slaves were to be freed and that uh, servants were to be treated and elevated up to the level of family status. So you couldn't just simply dump your slaves and the way you went. Uh, if you were a slave owner, if you had servants in the house, if you were a master in, in your house and you had servants, then you had to adopt your, your, your servants as your own kin. Uh, and this is was sort of the path that Christ had taken. Is because then this is one of the reasons why in the Eastern tradition you have a difference of opinion than the Western tradition. Western tradition, Christ came down and was had to come down in order to pay for our sins. Another was he Christ sacrifice, Christ uh, execution on the Christ was an atonement, a payment for our sins, and. The, that this is something that's completely foreign in the Eastern tradition, in in in, in the Orthodox philosophy, theology, in the original theology, and the original theology was that Christ came to elevate man, to bring man back into relationship with God as brother and sister, as part of God, not something separate, not something beneath, not something below, uh, but part of God. Uh, as brothers and sisters with God, uh, so he he basically came to adopt us. And it's in other words, it, it's the adoption of man, uh, the coming of Christ, the birth of Christ is the adoption of man. And in many ways, if you're looking at, and this is where you guys have to sort of point out to these uh, these atheists, these debunking atheists like Sam Harris and Christopher Hitch Hitchens, uh, who who really rail against Christianity. 
need to understand that the origins of uh, individualism, of individual thought, of individual freedom, began with Christ. And I'm not talking about the interpretations of Christ that were developed later from the Roman Catholic Church. I'm talking about the original Christ. I'm talking about the original life of Christ, which was very individualistic, very, it, very anti-authority. Because what did Christ do? If you read the gospel carefully and you read throughout the whole the whole thing, Christ didn't come to chastise us and tell us <coughs> this is what you must do. He came to challenge authority, to say that authority had no authority. He came to destroy authority. He came to destroy the nature of authority, stating that, that the nature of authority, which was at that time believed to be God-given, was not God-given. This is God in the midst saying authority had no authority. Authority was not divine. And this was Christ's life. Christ, and this is one of the. This was the prime reason he was executed. He was executed as a person, as as a rabbi, as a threat to authority, because he directly challenged authority. This was Christ's uh, sin. This was Christ's crime against the state. This crime against authority. And without this, you wouldn't have individualism. Without this, you wouldn't have people like Mahat Mahatma Gandhi. Or in passive resistance, or any of this stuff, this stuff wouldn't exist. Philanthropy wouldn't exist without Christ. So, when this is all dismissed by the debunkers, they don't even look at history. They don't even care about looking at history. And this forms a form of ignorance. Anyways, that's it for now. I'll come back in a bit, maybe tomorrow, and do some more. I've decided to come back again right after I did the last uh, segment because while the idea is fresh in my mind, we can continue on the discussion with uh, about Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens and other uh, so-called debunkers, the scientific debunkers, who uh, uh, have kind of come up with these, these titles. I'll give an example here: Christianity is the is is part of the problem. Why faith is bad and. The, a large chunk of these people put themselves in superior positions because they consider themselves to be thinkers, to be, analyti analy to be analytical thinkers, analytical thinkers, and they often chastise the right, the religious right, as they call it, call them, as being ignorant, as simply following a line that somebody else had set for them without really thinking about it. And well, to a certain degree, Christopher Hitchens and um, Sam Harris are correct that there are many uh, uh, so-called religious right apologists who toe the line of the religious right of the Christ, of the Christian right. The um, the bunkers are equally guilty of towing their particular line. In other words, you have two sides of an argument. Where, if you look at the entire grammar, in other words, if you go back and you study the part of his, history, Christian history, that is often missed, that is the first part of the Christian history, from 0 AD to 1000 AD, and that means you have to go into Greek studies, you have to go into the Syriac studies, you have to go into studies of the Middle East prior to 800 AD. If you have not done this, you will not have any concept or idea of what Christianity was like prior to the emergence of Western Christianity. Western Christianity and Eastern Christianity are two fundamentally different theologies. To, in many ways, they're opposing. They're opposed to each other. And this is not understood and completely missed by Christopher Hitchens and Sam Harris, but it's also not understood and completely missed by the Christian right. So you have two people who are fundamentally talking at each other who have more than a thousand years of Christian history missing and omitted from their arguments, from their studies, from their particular points of view. And what you can see here is you can see two groups who, based on what they see, the minute that they see, 
have taken positions of authority that they shouldn't have taken to begin with because they don't have the full answer. They haven't seen the full aspect of the Christian church and its different variations, how it evolved over the, the last 2,000 years and the different evolutions of it because there were different branches. There were different um, derivatives of Christianity. You have an original Christianity, then you have Christian derivatives. You have Christian denominations who are subdivisions of of the original theology. And then if you understand this, then you understand that there isn't a simple Christian right, but rather the Christian right represents a Western Christian right, it represents a European Christian right, and it only refers to the European Christian right and does not include the rest of the ancient world, the Eastern Christianity, which uh, actually is the foundation of Christianity. The foundation of Christianity, and this is why the first Rome for, for the Christian Empire was not Rome, but Istanbul, Istanbul, uh, uh, Constantinople in Turkey. The reason why it was Tur why was Turkey the first Rome? Simple, because this is where the church began. This is where the church emerged from from, from Turkey, from Syria, from Greece, from Lebanon, from uh, the Palestinian desert, from Egypt. And this is, you have to go into the Coptic Church to understand it. You have to go into the Syriac Church to understand it. You have to go into Aramaic to understand it. And once you go into Aramaic, then you go into, in, in the Syriac language, then you get into, what there? The Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls are written in Aramaic. They're not written in Hebrew. They're written in Aramaic. This understanding, this thread of understanding, is completely missing from both the arguments on the Sam Harris and Christopher, Christopher Hitchens' side, that's the, the bunker side, and missing from the Christian right. Both sides are missing this thread of debate, this line of understanding. And without this line of understanding, they are simply talking at each other. Both sides are incorrect. Both sides are misunderstanding their arguments. And th this is something that you can go back and you can kind of see this. And I will be going through this in a more detail. Like I said, this is these are the preliminary notes for uh, for Insta vlogs, and I will be going in more in depth into this in the Insta vlogs. Uh, but it, you know, this it, it is as as you talk with people, as you, you you hear people's experiences, you hear how they became what they became, how. What influenced their life, and you know, you know, how did you get? How did one person who was particularly older than you, or, or, or you know, how did they come into their particular life? How did they come into their particular points of view? And you know, everybody has an interesting story if you're willing to listen. And the thing is, is you don't have to agree with everything. You don't have to agree with a particular point of view. But the thing is, is that <coughs> doesn't mean that their experiences in life are worthless. And the thing is, if you dismiss these things, if you're dismissive of this, and sort of, and offhand, oh, it's not scientific. Well, then who's being closed-minded? You know, is, is being closed-minded scientific? Is that what it means to be scientific? Well, if you're being closed-minded and that's scientific for you, then I have bad news for you. That's not science. That's not research. That's not open-minded. That's faith. That's belief. And you've simply turned religion, uh, turned turned science, into another religion. Atheism becomes a religion. becomes a belief. When you do that, and the thing is, you are in many ways are as ignorant as and closed-minded as the uh, person on the right. Anyways, that's it for uh, this BTS vlog. Uh, tomorrow we'll start a new BTS vlog, and hopefully we'll uh, sort of stay on track. And <laughs> anyways, Kalakristuyana, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in the coming New Year.
I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say, can you see? Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.